Hello, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Hello, Caribbean. Hello, world. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Page Turner's Plus. The last time you saw us, we were discussing Cassie P. Caribbean P.I., a novel by Cecil Brown, who is a Vincentian writer living in the United Kingdom. Cecil grew up in St. Vincent and the Grenadines until his teen years when he moved to the United Kingdom. He's been a mathematics lecturer for most of his life, but he's also probably an underground writer. I think probably that's the best way to describe him. Um, he's the w regional winner up for 2022 of the Car of, sorry, of the Commonwealth Short Story Competition. The short story is called A Hat for Lemmer. Um, welcome, Cecil. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. All right. Now, wh when we discussed um, last week, discussed uh, Cassie P and A Hat for Lemmer, we noticed that you seem to have a fascination with PIs, with, um, with sleuths, with women sleuths in particular. Um, we were wondering what that is about. What is that fascination about? Well, it's really uh, the, the, the fact that Lemma um, developed from Cassie P. Cassie P I wrote in 2019 and um, I was submitting to the Commonwealth short story and I thought, well, why not have this character Cassie, in a sense, transplanted back 200 years to see how she would um, cope in a, in a different society. So I, I chose the female character because uh, one, I'd, I'd done it before, as it were, with, um, with Cassie P. Uh, so, so there's no great mystery uh, uh, to it. And uh, I chose a woman because I think it helps to to get into places where perhaps men wouldn't um, normally go. So that's it's a simple, 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 simple reason, nothing more elaborate than that. It, that's interesting because um, apart from their professions, Cassie P didn't, um, and Lemma don't seem that similar to me, but perhaps we can discuss that more later. Um, I'm going to invite Kessawa now to come in with some questions. Hi, Cass um, Cassie, Cecil. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you for being with us. Um, I'm going to kind of continue on the same line of question, actually. I think it's, I don't think it's that typical, but I could be wrong, but it felt like a quite an unusual choice uh, for a male writer to choose as his, his main character, a woman. Um, and so I guess the real question is, like, for you, how do you think you might have drawn the character differently? What traits might they not have or have had? You talked a little bit about access to places, you know, what made th having a female investigator um, important to your story for you, either for Lemma or for Cassie P? I think as a writer, I find that uh, I extend myself a lot more if I have uh, unfamiliar people. So so if, if I wrote characters as a, as a male, uh, I, I think I tend to get frivolous or flippant and be because I know um, what, what a man would do normally. Uh, you try to put yourself in, into that space. And so by having a female character, it forces me to, to, to think, hang on, how, how would people react to her? How would she react to different situations? So the choice really is made uh, as a writer to, to, to extend myself, to, to, to draw on things I wouldn't normally draw on. Good day, Cecil, good to meet you. And to you. Okay, um, all of Cassie's cases involve family drama or betrayals by friends. Uh, was that a conscious choice? And if so, why did you make that choice? I, I didn't think of it until uh, I actually, you know, you put, actually put the question to me. I just thought, well, let's find a series of cases for, for Cassie to explore, uh, cases that... Uh, are not so transparent at the beginning that the reader is going to say, I can spot who did it. I I, I didn't really think of them as, as family dramas or as um, cases that that explore the, 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 the family. And But in a sense, I'm happy that it actually does um, come out in it because the family is something I consider very important and something that we've probably 
underexplored in Caribbean literature. And so, so yes, the, the be betrayal, uh, uh, vengeance, justice, the, all these come out in, um, in, 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 in mysteries. I think uh, if, if you listen to the police and so on, they tend to tell you that most um, crime is committed within the family or by somebody that you know. You, you, you don't get a, a random random events very often. So, so, so all the crime, all the major crime, all the mysteries are solved or take place within the family or friendship uh, structures. The, 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 the person who goes along and just commits a crime 20, 20 miles away from home really is, is, would be very unusual. Mm. So, so, basically, so, so, so it seems to me to to situate all this within the family or within uh, the friendship groups. So basically, you you drew from what you knew, um, and it wasn't like particular or acutely Caribbean. I think it's C Caribbean. I, I, the, the, I can't see certainly the, the the dramas could happen elsewhere, but I've tried to create a very much a picture of what Vincentian and other Caribbean islands would be like. Um, but I can see these transfer into other countries as well. But what I've tried to do is to really say, let's make her, let's make Cassie Vincentian Caribbean and let's see how she she goes about and in doing so let's let's just reveal a little bit of uh, Caribbean society at the same time. That's partly the um, the interest I had in in creating this character. Okay, thank you. Cecil, um, I have, I'm very curious about the time, the time setting for a uh, hat for Lemma. You, you set it exactly 20 years after emancipation. Why is that? The, the, the 20, the number 20 itself isn't that significant, but I didn't want to set it, um, directly after, like say two or three years after emancipation when when the enslaved people hadn't really truly found their feet. Um, obviously, if, if, we, if we think emancipation now, they're, they're able to, to, to leave the estates in theory, but of course they, they can't because they're, they're tied. Whatever they wear, their clothing, everything belongs to the estate owner. So I, want, I wanted to give them a bit more space to, to, to try to find their feet. And so, 15, 20 years the, uh, along when they've had time to decide, let me see how I set out and forge a life for myself. Uh, let me see what others around me are doing. Let me see where I can fit in or I can lead uh, what kind of life I can get for myself. So, so the figure 20 isn't magical in that sense, but it's just a, a time frame for, for people to, to have had a good look to see that they can control their lives and uh, what kind of uh, path they're trying to create for themselves. I mean, it's a fascinating time period and I agree with Paula, it's a really interesting choice, even if it's not a magical thing, the idea of a generation after yeah. enslavement ends. Um, yeah, it's particularly in English-speaking Caribbean, of course, because, you know, 19, um, 1858, <clears throat> excuse me, is only 10 years after enslavement in the French Caribbean and it's it hasn't yet happened in the Dutch so it is a really interesting time period for that reason but I'm just I'm getting distracted that wasn't my question mm -hmm. um I wanted actually to come back to this idea of the Caribbean context of the novel you mentioned you wanted to have a sleuth you want to have a mystery and I love that you chose mystery as the genre that you think you kind of attached to because I think um you know uh, uh, many of our elders were fans of murder she wrote um, and I really got the sense of, of Cassie P being a sort of Jessica Fletcher type character in her community. You know, it's a small community where <laughs> people are getting murdered left, right and centre for some reason. Um, and, you know, and it's a drama every week to find out who, how is she going to solve it this time? Um, but she's very involved. But I also think it speaks to um, the idea of a community that isn't. No, sorry, let me even phrase that. I think it. It speaks to um, the non pathologization. That was a terrible choice of language. Um, but essentially, when you put that, you bring out this kind of nice idea of a warm, friendly, quite connected Caribbean community, but at the same time, um, crime is happening and it doesn't pathologize the people. I think for black people, often it's it's a tension to have kind of crime happen, but not all black people to be bad and kind of fighting the stereotype of black negativity, of black. 
that then that's what I'm trying to say, the pathologizing of blackness. Um, but at the same time, you are allowing crimes to happen. And I think keeping it in the family does speak to, like you say, the reality of how crime happens. Um, <laughs> but my question, I'm going to come to a question here, <laughs> is, I, just, I, think, I just think that's really well done. And I wanted to kind of say that. But I think the question is, were you also responding somewhat to, I think, in a British context, we're thinking about death in paradise and the way that that misrepresents so many Caribbean communities. Um, I mean, my particular bugbear, having lived in the Francophone Caribbean, this is the idea that people come from the UK and dress more formally in a work environment than Caribbean people do. And year after year, it was the absolute opposite. Of it. The English person would arrive or the French person would arrive and want to wear like sandals to the office. People are like, that's, that's beach wear. We don't wear that in the office. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I thought you really captured these kind of realities of Caribbean daily life in a way that that very famous popular program doesn't yeah. so is that a, was that a conscious choice on your part or was it just a question or was it something else I I have watched Death in Paradise I must say that uh, in the middle of winter when it's dark and cold and so on and I know lots of Caribbean people watch it uh, not because of the the plot or the fact that uh, this English character is solving problems, but for the simple reason that we want to see some sun and to to almost get the heat to come out of the television into back into our homes. But uh, the the program is silly. There's no two ways about it. It's um, extremely silly. We've got a an Englishman uh, coming to the Caribbean dressed in a suit in the hot sun, uh, poncing about and um, can't cook can't, um, is scared of lizards and all that kind of foolishness. Uh, and, um, you know, and it, it just happens that all the characters come in and the characters who are killed are all English and white and so on. And, we, and you know, people keep screaming, why don't we have some, some black murders or some black crime as well, you know, some Caribbean crime in it, you know? So it's just, it's just so ridiculous. Uh, you know, yeah, in a sense, Cassie is a, is a is a counter to this. This is what the real Caribbean is like. Cassie um, and her husband, um, you know, they're, they're, they're started in the police force. Um, you know, Cassie makes a, a, a bad choice and now she, she's got to, to, to rectify it in some way. And uh, her husband, uh, eventually the gambling leads to, to, to them meeting up and so on. So I've, tr I've tried to create a Caribbean, the, the, the real Caribbean, and I can see this applying to not just um, SVG, but to all the Caribbean islands. I can just see something very, very similar happening. They're, they're, they're part of a community. That's, that's the thing um, I'm trying to stress. They operate very much within a community with people who care for them and uh, people that they love. And um, so, so it's the community idea that's very, uh, uh, the family community idea that's very important. Uh, if I may, I'd like to come back to, uh, I, I had Philema. Um, there, there's a section in the, the story where Lima herself refers to a Reverend Alexander who shipped 200 enslaved people from, is that Layu? Um, from in, I'm sorry, into Layu from, into from Antigua. Antigua. Yeah. yeah. Is that a historical fact? And if so, uh, how does the story go? Yeah. <laughs> the funny the, the funny thing is I've been trying to find that for, for, for weeks because I read it in um in a book by we, we've got a historian, it's dead now, Dr. Dr. Adams, who, who told me and I'd I'd read it in one of his books. And I've been reading all these books for the last <laughs> tried to try to find the blooming passage and I couldn't. And I found it this morning in a, in another article by a, a Cambridge historian. Uh uh, uh, Reverend Brown had brought in his slaves from Caicos, uh, um, the Caicos Islands. I think it's um, 600, I think, they they imported in 1806 to um, to Grand Sable. Alexander Brown had um, a, a massive estate in Grand Sable, and he brought his um, his 600 and odd ens uh, enslaved people to, to St. Vincent uh, with him to, 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 to operate on his estate. And Brown is actually quite famous um, in in the island, in the history of the island. He was the one who who put forward the idea for tunnel, the the the, the, the Black Point Tunnel and the the Byra Tunnel. 
and the enslaved people were the ones who constructed these two tunnels which uh, linked the town to the to, to the, the most prosperous part of the island, the Carib country, as they call it. So, so in 18, 1813 and 1815, the enslaved people constructed, um, under his guidance and with his uh, money, uh, constructed these massive, like, 300-foot tunnels to, to link the island. And so Brown was the, the, the person who, um, who, who, who financed all this. And um, if uh, if uh, if you know St. Vincent, you know there's a there's a place called Brownstown up in Georgetown, uh, the the local place, and it's named after him. So the so the Brown family, uh, no relation, hopefully, the the Brown family were very um, instrumental in developing uh, that that particular area and made quite a lot of profit out of it uh, as well. Oh, so that, that sounds like a really significant piece of uh, Vincentian history there then. Yeah, yes, it's uh, it's St. Vincent's history is incredibly fascinating. I was um I was asked last week, a couple of weeks ago, was it was it two weeks ago, um Kesua? Is it at the British Library? I can't yeah, yeah. Um, you know, somebody was saying to me, you must write uh, something about this, but the history of St. Vincent is 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 just phenomenal. The, 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 the 1675 um, sinking of a ship off Beckway and the, the, the slaves swimming to Beckway and then coming back onto the mainland and uh, forming, I'll say the Black Caribs now, although a lot of people don't like to call them Caribs, uh, the Garifuna and so on. Uh, so, so you have this slave ship and this idea that uh, Black people can't swim and, and, and all that nonsense. So, but these people, you know, go into Beckway coming onto the mainland and forming the, the, the Black Caribs who then, you know, uh, have a guerrilla war with England for a hundred years, you know, who've, who, who, who defeat thousands of um, British uh, soldiers. You know, it's a, fa it's a fascinating um, story. And part, part of my interest is to get some of that out in fiction to, to people who who, who don't want to read straight history. They want, uh, they're, they're happier getting their history via fiction and, and why not? So, so that, that's part of my mission really as a writer to, to, to fictionalize uh, if, if, uh, actual events. And uh, so, sometimes it could be just a simple word. I, I remember having a story and uh, one of the characters was called, I think, Caroline Chateau. And somebody said, that's an interesting name. Where do you get the word Chateauet from? And it leads you then to say, well, Chateauet was was uh, the Carib chief who who really was the bane of the British. And it might take a small fact like that to get people investigating. Oh, I must find out a bit more about this Chateauet just by having a simple a simple surname, uh, a simple character with this name. Uh, so so yes, I'm 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 happy to introduce. Um, people to history uh, via the route of fiction. Well, speaking as a historian, I think Kessler would say the same. Uh, we, we do appreciate the novelists and the writers for uh, thinking historically and introducing uh, people to important uh, factoids and stories uh, in which they would not never otherwise get for people who don't read uh, historical monographs or, or tomes. Um, so uh, we're working together. That's, that's, yes, that's what I would yes, say. Yes, yes. We have a we have a we have a duty in a, in a sense to 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 get people get these um, stories out there so that people people will will um, will develop have their own personal development in their reading development. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Cecil, that brings me to the question of <clears throat> the fact that um, your work, certainly your literary work, appears to be very centered in the Caribbean, even though you've lived in the United Kingdom since your teens. Um, I'm wondering why it is that your work, I mean, there is a long tradition of Caribbean writers who live outside the reg region still, uh, still centering their work in the Caribbean. I'm wondering why you in particular do that rather than write about your experience as a black British man, which I imagine you, you probably, I, I imagine you have a dual identity. I don't know if, if you think of yourself as a black British man and as a Caribbean man, but, but you're right. You write 
it seems, well, we've only read um, A Hat for Lemma and Cassie P, but both concentrate on the Caribbean. Why is that? I, d I don't think we ever leave the Caribbean. Uh, that, that, that if I, I left when I was 13 and I've been here for X number of years. Um, X tends to infinity. <laughs> um, and but but in a sense, we never leave. We, we live in a small uh, community, a small town just outside 20 miles away from London. And I, I can step out my window, uh, step out my door and who would be there? I would see somebody from the local community. And what, what do we talk about? We talk about um, St. Vincent. We talk about the Caribbean, music, food, cricket. So in a sense, we've, we've never actually left. So although we live this, uh, this life in, in England, the, our whole foundation is based on, 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 on those 15, 20 years in which we grew up. Everything that we have, the, 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 our loves, our likes, our dislikes, everything was, was formed during that period. And so, and in a, in a, in a dark, cold winter, these are the things that support us, you know, the, the stories from, from school. I still have people I played cricket with at um, primary school when I was when we were about 10. And, and he, you know, he, he would remind me of, of those cricket games that we played. And so we have those connections still. Uh, so it's the music, you know, reggae, calypso, soca, the dances that they, they allow us. They allow us to, to keep our, our Caribbean-ness uh, intact. And so when we get bombarded by, by, by insults or accusations and so on in England, we, we have that shield, that Caribbean shield, because we know we have our own music, our own food, our own sports, our own history. So we, we don't have that sense of, um, of uh, that, that fragility that a lot of people who were born in um, England have, Caribbean, you know, Caribbean. We don't have that fragility because we have that shield of knowing that, hang on, we, we've got a lovely, we've got lovely, beautiful islands. We've got the most beautiful islands in the world, in the Caribbean. You know, we have our own music, our own culture, our history, our sports. You know, we, we our own literature. We've been well, as James, CLR James said, we've been world class in literature and sports for, you, you know, for a hundred years. So, so, so it provides a shield in a sense. Um, and, and also, I, I shall also add that, uh, Part part of my my mission is to is to explore Vincentian society. A, a lot of people see England as being more important, and they see small islands as not being interesting, and people from 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 tiny communities as as not worth investigating. I think V.S. Naipaul, um, when he when he started writing, said uh, the, the the difficulty he had was that he didn't know what to write about. He had no topics for, to, to write about. What a stupid thing to say. What, what, how do you mean you, have nothing, you don't know what to write about? Are you saying that the Caribbean is not worth writing about? Caribbean people are not worthy of being written about? It's, it's, so, so no, I'm, I'm saying that Caribbean people are, are, are fascinating. You, 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 wherever I go, they're, they're the most inventive, uh, devious, uh, fascinating people um, you, you could ever meet. So there's always some character you you you, you want to listen to or to, um, to 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 say, tell me a bit about your story because I find their sense of invention and um, tomfoolery, as somebody said, um, just so incredible that. I, you can never run out of stories to um, to, to 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 write about Caribbean people. Mm. May, 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 I, may I act to follow up there, Paula? Um, I'm I have not immigrated in the technical sense, but I I grew up in one area of the United States, which is quite unique, and historians would call the Caribbean. Um, and I've, I've I've migrated to a different part of the country, and I feel the longer I've lived outside of my hometown, the more attached I am to it. Yes, I could. 
So yeah, that, I, that, that's what I wanted to put forward to you. Here. I could, I, I could, I could, I could fully understand that. You know, the 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 physical places that you that you went to take on are significant. One of the things I have to resist is um, placing that the setting. The, the setting always comes back to to somewhere I knew from um, when I when I was young. So I'm always having to say no, no, no. Place the characters somewhere else. But those physical spaces you know take on a, a significance that uh, when you're away that you 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 simply didn't didn't have you know the little gestures the your grandparents um make the the people in the in the villages and the community who are kind to you they take on a significance now that uh you you clearly wouldn't appreciate if you if if, if you'd stayed i find yes yeah, so I, 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 sorry sorry Guess the way I was going to call you in anyway, so go ahead. <laughs> I'm gonna, I was going to say, the don't know what you got that you've gone phenomeno sounds like what you're talking about. I mean, I think there are plenty of people that appreciate it while they're there. So I think you should speak for yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> um, I wanted to come kind of, I picked up on what you said about um, places having significance. And I think one of the some of the novels we've looked at this year i'm thinking particularly of the island of forgetting by jasmine seeley um sherry jones is how the one armed sister speaks sweeps her house but probably most obviously in um ayanna lloyd banwo's um when we were birds uh, all three writers kind of deliberately chose not to name the countries where their stories were set um and i, I and it's kind of interesting that you've kind of gone the opposite way actually you're kind of you meant you talk about st vincent a lot in in cassie p certainly um and I wondered what, what, why you'd made that different choice. You're not the only one, you know, who think about Miriam Chelsea's book. She also is quite specific about Haiti being the place that she's talking about and names places in the same way, perhaps that you do. Um, but was, that, was there any conversation about whether you should kind of use a different name? Um, no, no. I think for, for a country coming, come, just, just about emerging into having a, a, a space in 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 written literature like St. like St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I think it's essential that you you name names. Uh, ju just recently, there've been a whole load of people publishing um, books in St. Vincent. I've not had a chance to read a lot, so when I go home in a couple of weeks, I'll get a chance. But we we don't have that strong uh, written tradition, and in a sense, to to conceal it would be to, to, to me to do it do, to do it a disservice. So I want to, I want people to to place the the, the the book and to say when they're driving past uh, this particular place, they, they will say, ah, oh, so that's the Black Point tunnel that he mentioned. When they go up to Fort Charlotte, oh yes, I can see what uh, the view out to Beckway is. Uh, in the same way that uh, when people go to London, they 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 go to London to look for the London of Charles Dickens, so 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 this is what I'm 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 doing. I'm I'm saying when people see the places in St Vincent, they see them with a with with a different eye. They they see them and and think, oh, so so this was what he was trying to say. When they see the birds, so that's what it looks like. Uh, so the physical space is very important, and so this is why I've said. Yeah, yes, let, let's name names. I was castigated um, some years ago by, um, by by a writer in St. Vincent because I'd, uh, I'd used the names, but I'd, I'd uh, messed up the geography. So, for example, I'd put town A next to town B, when in fact, in reality, they're like miles apart. And uh, he said, you can't do that. He said, "You can't, you can't do that. This place, this place is like, um, you know, two miles away. Why are you putting it fifteen miles away?" And I had to say to him, "It's fiction." And my friends tell me they like to see their places mentioned in a book. It's as simple as that. They want to see. I, you know, they said, "I'm from Leyu, uh, and you put Leyu in my book. I like that. I'm from um, Chester Cottage." Uh, they like to see their places mentioned in the book. And we must never underestimate how these little things, uh, how important these little things are to people, to read, to readers. Um, mm. Cecil, you mentioned um, a few writers. Tell me, who are you, who do you like to read? Who are the writers you, you read most and um, you'd recommend that our viewers read? I've I've 
I've just, well, I've finished the, the, how the one arm sister sweeps her, um, you know, and, and also when we were birds, my goodness, and you just wish, I wish I'd written those myself, <laughs> you know, because they're just so, 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 so good. Um, but there's just so many fantastic writers, especially female writers coming out of the Caribbean at the minute, you know, the, the women are just carrying the swing completely. There's no two ways about it. I, I tried to read Caribbean, so I enjoyed Marlon James' uh, history of uh, seven killings, although um, my sister couldn't stand it because she said it was just too brutal. Um, so I read Caribbean. I, I like V.S. Naipaul. Um, I like his writing. I think, you know, for, I think it was Derek Walcott who said nobody could write a, a sweeter sentence, but his, his, his uh, work is so, so obnoxious, you know, the, the, the the very technical the greatest technician but his um his attitude towards black people towards the caribbean towards women and so on you know and it, it's a shame because he really he, he he's just such a fabulous writer you know you just read and you think i wish i could write like that um i like derek walcott uh um i'm i'm not a great one for, for I don't understand poetry all that well, so I'm I'm still struggling with Walcott. Um, but uh, I was told uh, to persevere that I would get there. Um, I think um, Jacob Ross I, at the library said, and they said just persevere, you'll get there in the end. But I read I read a lot of Caribbean writers. I tend to read a lot of history. Um, as a, as opposed to um, as sorry as well as fiction I shouldn't say as opposed to fiction. So we had quite a lot of people come into the Caribbean in the eighteen hundreds visiting the different islands, and they've left their accounts. And uh, those are fascinating to read. So so my reading is eclectic, I suppose I could say. Uh, I like uh, I like Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> I like mysteries. I like um, Tolstoy. I, I, you know, I, I, I like Tolstoy. I like um, John Mortimer with his. Um, I don't know if you know Rum Paul of the Old Bailey. So I, 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 I read. I read a fair, a, a fair number of writers. I wouldn't say I have a favourite, um, um, although Naipaul, Naipaul would be would be the one. It, I, I suppose you love him as well as hate him. Um, mm. Yeah, he's he's just so fascinating. Um, I like um, Tony Morrison, obviously. Um, Walter Mosley. Uh, so 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 my and Aikwe Yama from um, Ghana. Aikwe Yama. I don't know if uh, we we had we had within the family he, his two thousand his book, the two thousand seasons, the healers, and we can't find the wretched books. What what somebody in the family's He's got it, and uh, Arma is to me uh, in, incredible. When you try to find one now, it's like sixty pounds. But the two thousand seasons and the healers, uh, the the uh, fabulous, fab absolutely fabulous. So, uh, but there, there were just so many good writers out there. You you just wish you had a dozen lifetimes so that you could learn. Mm. <laughs> I, I think uh, all of us can relate to that yeah, feeling. Yeah, like, yeah, so, yeah. so many wonderful stories, not enough time. Yeah, and uh, uh, I, I was going to say also, you wish you didn't have the daily chores of um, uh, of having to earn a living so yeah, that you can sit and, sit and read. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So um, two kind of questions, really, from me. Um, you're clearly an avid reader, and I suppose the question is, have you always been a really avid reader, or is that something that you picked up later in life? Um, and the second question is, I know you've spoken quite passionately in the past about encouraging men to read, and you talked about a lot of the big kind of, well, big is probably not the right word, some of our, our most beloved writers at the moment and best um, being women um, coming out of the Caribbean. And I just kind of wondered if, um, as an avid reader, and if you could talk about your own journey as a writer, that was it, <laughs> the journey from reader to writer, sorry, is what I meant to say. As I said, I'm a, I'm a lecturer in math, so a lot of my reading has been mathematical uh, and scientific. I've, I've been reading um, pretty much all my life. I, one of the things I regret was that my primary school in St. Vincent didn't, didn't have a library. And even when I went to secondary school, I, I lived in the country, so I had to catch a van uh, to, to go to school. 
in in the in Kingstown that was um in the 70s so 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 I couldn't really access the books in the library because in those days if you if you missed the van the one van going back to the country that was it so 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 I I regret not 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 having access to a, a, a full library when I was um you know in my early teens but yes I've been reading for my own pleasure ever, you know ever since I it was a teenager in terms in terms of writing i've always loved um calypsos and telling stories and so on so if we if we go go out anywhere i'm i'm always the one telling telling some foolishness telling some nancy story or whatever it is uh so in the same way i li i like to listen but i also like to tell so 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 writing is is a natural continuation of that in a sense and uh probably 15, 15 years ago or whatever it, it is, I thought, well, let me have a go um, at this. But it's then that you realize that writing is not as easy as putting putting one word behind the next one. It's not quite as, a, <laughs> it's not quite as simple as that. There's writing and there's writing well. And it's taken me quite a long time to, to, to try to master uh, telling a story and telling a story um, Telling the story well, so so it's been a long it's been a long journey, and even and even now, I think I'm still developing as a writer. I'm still trying to to get used to the idea that uh, that you can pack a lot more into a sentence. So you don't just say it is hot. You show the heat by saying, I think it's from Inland. You you say uh, that the sun roasting her four thick plaits, you know, and that gives you two two bits of information. She's got four thick plaits, and the sun is very hot. So so, but but it's it, that it sounds very simple, but it's not quite as simple when you when you start writing. There really is a, a craft to writing, and it's something I've had to I've had to learn and learn the hard way. And that would be, that's a good segue into my question regarding style. How would you describe your own writing style? And and, and I recognize that your style is, 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 is evolving from what you just stated, ever evolving, all our writing styles are ever evolving. So, but could you pinpoint like a particularity about your style right now? Uh, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I try, I think the, the story or the um, the character dictates the style. Um, a hat for lemma. Uh, I can't I can't see that being written in standard English. Let's put it that way. The story um, has a kind of urgency which comes out in the in the Caribbean ness of the of the language. Uh, so I can't see. I, I don't think I have a particular style. I try to to go with a character and they lead me. They tell me this sounds right or this doesn't sound very well and sometimes you have to change from 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 being the first person to the third person because the character the story the story demands it what i do think i have and i think somebody pointed this out um, that they, they were saying that my that the, your work is um it, it, is, is written in English. I was told in in, in Saint Vincent once. One of your stories. Uh, why do you write in English like that? Uh, people in Saint Vincent don't um, speak like this. And I said, well, it's it's not how you you write it. It's actually how you how you read it. In 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 essence, the the the, the story, the prose has a Caribbean rhythm to it. So 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 although you, I start that the, the hat for lemma by saying rain pelt whole night in the mountains, although it's the, their English words, rain pelt the whole night in the mountains. But when you read it, it's a Caribbean rhythm to it, rain pelt the whole night in the mountain. And so, so the, the, the rhythm is in the Caribbean-ness of the, uh, of the, uh, of the work. So, so I let the, I let what, whatever I'm writing tell me which, which is the, the, the best way to approach it. And, uh, if 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 there is a style that's uh that people can recognize at mine, I'd be very <laughs> I'd be very chuffed to to for somebody to say, oh that 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 sounds uh, just like one of your bits. I'd be chuffed, but I I I don't know that I have a style. Just before we leave, we'll we are taking an excerpt from a hat for lemmer, which is uh, Cecil's prize-winning short story. The next time you see us. 
we'll be discussing Marcia Douglas's The Marvelous Equations of the Dread, which is one of my favorite stories of all time. So please be sure <laughs> to join us then. Bye-bye and thanks again for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you. This is A Hat for Lemma, which won the Commonwealth Short Story Regional Prize for Europe. Um, and Canada in the Commonwealth Short Story Prize 2022. The story is set in St. Vincent in August 1858. Rain pelt the whole night in the mountain. It silenced the animals that love to break my sleep. It joined the wind and lashed my tiny wooden shack where the volcano ridge break for a bit of flat. Next morning, the sun battled back so fierce, the storm seemed like a bad dream. After such a stormy night, the ground still slippery. Strange to spot someone struggling up the slope to my home as I'm coconut oil in my hair. Caribs and runaways hunting wild pigs, I could understand. But a white man, and alone so deep in the mountain? From the narrow slit of a window, I catch the figure sweeping back the bushes like a paddler in a canoe. A heavy man with a red bulging foot face. Mud splatter his trousers up to the belt and the green jacket holding back his stomach catch a cake in two. This man brave. What he could want with me? I slip out the back door and take a path through the forest. Sometimes best to greet an intruder hugging a tree. He made to take a step forward his eyes on the house, as if it might disappear if he look away. Before he could tell himself, not far to go, he fall flat on his stomach. And Satan, he staggered to his feet, furious with some dry stick he didn't notice in his part. When he finished brushing off his clothes, he find me beside him, my narrow face soft but closed. You trip me, he growled. You throw me down. The blue veins in his neck pulse. This local born Creole white who blend our language with his. But I don't step back when he snarl and grunt. He on crown land, my land. I cross my arms and stare back. My name is Noah Brisbane, he say after a while. My horseman Mel tell me you know the island well. You guide people across the mountain and find those who get lost for a small sum. I dig my toes into the mud and force my body up the hill to my little garden patch, leaving him there muttering. Wheezing turned to cursing as he stumbled up behind me. I almost finished picking herbs at the side of the house by the time he reached. I own the estate nine miles from Kingstown. Nine miles south of Kingstown would place him in the Caribbean Sea. Nine miles north in Mespo Valley. West would find the town of Leyuk where the Reverend Alexander shipping his 200 slaves from Antigua because he cared for them so much. The Brisbane now squatted on a stone in my yard must mean East then, the Diamond Estate. I begin to pack a crocus bag with herbs while he sweep the, the sweat from his forehead. My work is in listening, I ask when I'm ready. Brisbane take my silence to mean that I curious, so he say, you want to know why I'm here, I suppose. I don't answer him. My herbs are my living. Well, two weeks ago, I invited an Englishman to my home, Wesley String. The Methodist Church in England sent him to St. Vincent to report on the schools, but he's vanished. Schools? Brisbane asked the question for me, then continue. You remember emancipation in 1838? Well, schools spring upon coconut palm stills, and where schools rise, inspectors follow. Brisbane. Emancipation had it some planters thousands of pounds. If February slipped by without a fet, then March pay with tree. How long he here? One month. I sniff a bundle of time and let Brisbane carry on. I put on a small feast for string. Beef, red snapper, ham, breadfruit, bananas. We have to show our guests the best of the island, not true. My cook Eva did us proud. I pay her an extra shilling. Brisbane flipped back his head a little as his eyes closed on the memory of the meal. A chill hit us late in the evening, so I sent for a brandy. My wife Georgina changed into her green silk dress. 
and string drained his glass. Another tiddy bottle? He suggested. Hats off to a new friendship, eh, Brisbane? Thank you. <laughs>